the Fit for the Master Weight Loss Strategy, and it's a four-point strategy to eat what is right. Fit for the Master, Fit, F-I-T, for the Master. So let's start with the F in F-I-T, for, in Fit for. The F is to follow a food plan. I know your flesh is probably hoping I would say that you can eat whatever and just pray and Jesus will take the weight away. And well, that's proof in and of itself that this is a spiritual issue. There is something in you, something rising in your flesh, mad that the first thing I mentioned was following a food plan. Here we go, another diet. Before you click off, though. Before you click this off, I want you to hold tight because see that thing that's rising up within you, it is a spirit, and that spirit has a name, and its name is the spirit of gluttony. See, gluttony as it relates to food, it's not just overeating, and it's eating unhealthily, eating when you're not hungry, and it is a demonic spirit with unnatural eating habits. See, these unnatural eating habits, they're such that when the very thought of being denied a particular food or denied amounts of food, it causes its victim emotional, mental, or even physical distress. What is happening right now with some of you, what you're feeling right now, that distress and frustration and anger you're feeling about following a food plan is manifestation of the influences of the spirit of gluttony. So you see, there's no doubt that there's a war going on inside of you right now about following a food plan because you do want to eat better. You want to eat better, but there's there's this warring going on inside that's causing distress, it's causing frustration and even anger at the thought of being denied food or denied amounts of food so that you can eat better. For many of us, we've been influenced by gluttony for so long that we've been co- we've become immune or, or desensitized to its existence, even to the extent that it is now the most ignored demonic spirit in our church today. And the reason it's ignored in the church is because we won't go to a crack house, we won't go to a liquor store, we won't go buy cigarettes, but we'll hit a convenience store, we'll hit a fast food restaurant, and and we'll do some serious damage at an all-you-can-eat buffet or at the church fellowship dinner. But the problem is, although we are ignoring it, it is still at work, it's operating, and the weight and the eating habits are only a symptom of the real agenda. And the real agenda is to sabotage God-ordained purpose, a assignments, relationships, organizations, and destinies. Yes, although we've played it down and ignored it, we've hesitated talking about it, it's remained undetected, and as John 9 and 10 tells us, it is stealing, killing, and destroying purposes. You see, where we're physically, where, when we physically can't go to a place or do things because of our size or because of physical ailment or because of health issues relating to our weight or because we don't feel good about ourselves so we're not showing up, that's killing and stealing and destroying purposes, assignments, and dreams. Um, when, when, when we, um, I know my, for myself, I've been the fat lady on the bus that no one wants to sit next to unless it's the very last seat. I've even been on a, the fat lady on the airplane where I've heard someone actually come and look at me and look and see the seat that's next to me that's open and, and go and tell, call a flight attendant, look, can I go get another seat? Can I seat somewhere else? I heard a lady say that. And what that does, that kills and steals and destroys potential relationships because what but if this particular person was a connection to a relationship that I needed, or maybe not that connection, but some other connection that I later missed out on in the following days or weeks or months ahead because I then uh, isolated or withdrawn because of the effect of, that her comment had on me. This spirit is no joke. It is out to kill, steal, and destroy purposes, assignments, relationships, opportunities, and yes, even organizations. You see, we sing the song, Lord, whatever you're doing in this season, don't do it without me. But you know what? If you're immobile or you have a hard time getting around or or maybe you're just embarrassed to go places um, or be around people because of your size, could it be that there were some things 
that God had to do in previous seasons without you. Look, this devil ain't playing. Although we may want to resist having food plans, understand the devil has had a food plan. He has had a strategic plan to use food to kill, steal, and destroy God's purpose for our lives. And so we, too, need to embrace a strategic plan to use food to obtain and experience the health and prosperity that the Father desires for us and the abundant life that Jesus came to give us. Because Jesus' purpose is to give us a rich and satisfying life, we need a food plan. It's important that you don't look at your food plan as a diet. See, what food, what a food plan is, it sets clear boundaries. See, we have to eat. But since gluttony has been influencing us for so long undetected, the boundaries that our food plan provides lets us know when we're not entertaining gluttony. Again, it's not a diet. Our goal is not to fit a dress for a wedding. Our goal is to be the physical size, health, and have the physical stamina that God needs us to be so that we can work with him, so that we are fit to fulfill the assignment and purpose that he has created us to be. He has an end in mind. Because, see, when God made us, he had a body intended just for us. This God intended body, it got altered by some circumstances that we were no doubt born into, or, or maybe even by our own behavior. But with his help, And following the plan for food he has for us, our bodies can be restored to the health and vitality that he desires. Embracing the idea of following a food plan, you'll find it actually to be a gift. Because, see, eating in a way that would have our bodies filled with health issues is not God's intention. See, God wishes above all things that we be in health. And so we have to ask our creator, God, How do you want us to eat? And we'll find that his answer, it will take us down a path that leads to life, vitality, abundance, and prosperity. Our goal here is to be led by the Spirit. And so the first thing we do is pray. And we ask the Holy Spirit to guide us, instruct us, show us the way that we are to eat so that we can have the body that God intended for us to have. And then after we pray, we ask for help. There's a brother or sister that God has raised for this adversity you're going through. There's a brother or sister who has recovered and is now anointed to strengthen you because they've previously had similar struggles and are now walking in victory. Ask that person. You're being sensitive to how the Holy Spirit is leading you. But don't let the process of of finding someone and asking someone who's gone through the struggle, you know, what they're doing or what they've done. Don't let that stop you. You know, i got to wait until I find somebody. No, don't let that stop you. In the meantime, start somewhere. Maybe you've talked to a doctor or a nutritionist um, and they gave you something. Or, or chances are you've already done a lot of research yourself or, or I'm sure have been given much advice from other people. If you're, any, if you're anything like me, you've already gotten a lot of advice from a lot of people. And in and, and all of that information and all of that knowledge that you already have, there is probably something, there's probably some kind of food plan, there's probably some kind of way of eating that God is already, the Holy Spirit is already churning on the inside with you. Start somewhere. Even start with that. Because no matter where you start with, you can trust, I rest assured, you can trust the Holy Spirit to guide you to what it is that God wants to do, wants you to do. That's how we find and follow a food plan. 